Hi, YouTube family. Welcome to Concept in Medicine. In today's tutorial, we are going to be looking at the gram positive bacteria and the gram negative bacteria. Let's begin. So, for the gram positive bacteria, look at the structure of the wall. Inner, you have the plasma membrane followed by a space we call the periplasmic space, then followed by the peptidoglycan. And you should know that the peptidoglycan is what gives I mean the strength to the bacteria wall, meaning that it absorbs all stress, okay, coming from, from the external environment or the internal environment. And if you watch the gram positive bacteria, it has about 30 layers of peptidoglycan in this wall, meaning that the peptidoglycan layer is very thick. And if you are looking at the measurement, it's about 20 to 80 nanometers in thickness. And also, Closely attached to the peptidoglycan, you have what you call the tequoic acid and the lipotequoic acid, meaning that should the bacteria undergo bacteriolysis, it would release the lipotequoic or the tequoic acid, and that is referred to as exotoxins. So telling you that the gram-positive bacteria, they produce what? Exotoxins. Now, Let's look at the gram-negative bacteria. For the gram-negative bacteria, the composition of the wall is a bit different. So if you look at it, you have the inner, you have the plasma membrane followed by the periplasmic space. Then after that, you have a very thin layer of peptidoglycan. It's very thin, about two to three nanometers in thickness. So after that thin layer of peptidoglycan, you have another periplasmic space then followed by the outer membrane followed by the outer membrane and the outer membrane contains the lipopolysaccharides and proteins and the lipopolysaccharides is what a gram negative bacteria will be releasing on its own or when it's undergoing bacteriolysis from antibiotics and that we call endotoxin meaning that the gram negative uh, bacteria produces endotoxins now let me show you a trick that would help you to easily affiliate with either gram-negative or gram-positive bacteria. So for the gram-positive uh, bacteria, always think about PPT. What does this sound for? Positive, peptidoglycan, tequoic acid. Positive, meaning gram-positive, peptidoglycan, tequoic acid. What does that mean? Gram-positive having what? A thick peptidoglycan layer in the wall and also producing tequoic acid so that's ppt now if you are doing a presentation ppt powerpoint okay for the gram negative you use the word long so long meaning lipopolysaccharides outer membrane negative gram so if you remember it tells you that the gram negative bacteria has an outer membrane containing lipopolysaccharides the gram negative bacteria releases lipopolysaccharides on its own or when attacked by antibiotics. And this lipopolysaccharides is what we call the endotoxin, meaning the gram-negative bacteria produces endotoxin. I hope we made sense out of that. So in short, the gram-positive bacteria has what? A thick peptidoglycan in its wall, measuring about 20 to 80 nanometers, very thick, and if you look at the peptidoglycan, it's closely attached to the tequoic acid and the lipotequoic acid. And I said to easily remember what the gram positive bacteria is, remember PPT, PowerPoint, meaning if it is positive, it will have a, a peptidoglycan in its all, a very thick one, and also it will release tequoic acid or lipotequoic acid on its own or when attacked by antibiotics, which we would term as an exotoxin. But for the gram negative, the, remember long, lipopolysaccharide, outer membrane, negative and gram. Gram negative bacteria having an outer membrane containing lipopolysaccharide. And the lipopolysaccharides, they are released in the form of what? Endotoxins. Okay, the next thing I want us to talk about is why gram positive and why gram negative? Now, if we take the gram positive, it means that the gram positive, it has a thick 
peptidoglycan layer in its wall. And when treated with a gram stain, that is a crystal violet dye, is applied to a culture containing a gram positive bacteria. And later, a counter stain agent is used. Counter stain agents such as safranin and fusin are used. The thick peptidoglycan layer retains the crystal violet dye and would appear it will appear what to appear purple the thick peptidoglycan wall retains the crystal violet dye after it has been treated with counter stain agents such as safranin or fusin it retains the crystal violet dye and appears purple but if you take the gram negative bacteria because of eating peptidoglycan layer after the crystal violet dye is applied and a counter stain agent such as safranin or fusin is used it is unable to retain the crystal violet dye and hence appears pink so for the gram positive they will appear purple when viewed under the microscope after the gram stain but the gram negative they will appear pink when viewed under microscope after the gram stain now the next thing i want us to talk about is the bacteria that belongs to the gram positive and those that belongs to the gram negative all right so let's move on and look at the gram positive bacteria and the gram negative bacteria so we'll start by looking at the gram positive bacteria for the gram positive bacteria we can divide them into two groups that is the cosi and the bacilli the cosi they are round and the bacilli they are the rod shape and for the cosi we can divide it into two so we can have the staphylococcus and the staphylococcus know that they are catalase positive and the streptococcus which are catalase negative and we can further go down and divide the staphylococcus which are catalase positive into subgroups based on whether they possess the enzyme coagulase or not so we we'll have the coagulase positive which will be staphylococcus aureus and coagulase negative and for the coagulase negative we can subdivide it into two we we'll have the staphylococcus epidemidis which is nova biosin sensitive then we we'll have staphylococcus saprophyticus which is nova biosin which is nova biosin resistant and both that's staphylococcus epidemidis and staphylococcus saprophyticus are coagulase negative even though they are catalase positive they are coagulase negative now with the streptococcus which is catalase negative now with the streptococcus which is catalase negative we can subdivide them into three groups what are these three groups we we'll have the first one which will be the beta hemolytic they are usually clear if you look at them under the microscope they are usually clear and under the beta hemolytic we we'll have the streptococcus pyogenes which is a group a streptococci and you should know that she did use the antibiotic bacitracin she used the antibiotic bacitracin sensitive to bacitracin and we also have the streptococcus egalatia they are the group b streptococci and for them they are bacitracin resistant furthermore we have the y hemolytic the y hemolytic that's where we have the enterococci enterococcus so for the enterococcus we have examples like enterococcus fecalis and enterococcus fexium then finally we have the alpha hemolytic they are usually green in nature and under that we can talk about streptococcus pneumonia which is the most common cause of community acquired pneumonia and you should know that streptococcus pneumonia is what catalase negative aftokin sensitive and bile soluble capsule it has a bile soluble capsule then the next one under the alpha hemolytic is the streptococcus viridine there are subtypes under streptococcus viridine we have the streptococcus mutants we also have the streptococcus sanguis and for them they are optokin resistance and they are non bile soluble then finally we can talk about the bacilli 
the bacilli we have two types that is the spore forming or spore producing bacilli and the spore non-producing or non-spore producing bacilli for the spore producing uh, bacilli we have examples like bacillus serus bacillus anthracis then we can go to the clostridial species which will be clostridium botulinum clostridium difficile clostridium perfringens and clostridium tetani so those are the spore forming bacilli now for the non-spore forming bacilli we can think of listeria monocytogenes and corinobacterium diphtheria let's move on and look at the gram negative bacteria now let's have a look at the gram negative bacteria for the gram negative bacteria they can be divided into two we have the cocci and the bacilli for the cocci they are only in two that's the neisseria species we have the neisseria gonorrhea and neisseria meningitidis and for the bacilli there's a trick that you can always use if you watch very carefully most of the things are ending in ella ella okay but not all of them are ella so we can think of salmonella typhi salmonella and teritidis we can also think of klebsilia pneumonia but the tela pertussis francella tularensis you can see they are all ending in ella ella legionella nemophila moracella cataralis pastorella maltosida costella benecti gardnerella virginalis shigella dysenteria brucella then others e coli hydro cholerae we can also think of hemophilus influenza we can also think of helicobacter pylori bacteria fragilis proteus seracea campylobacter jejuni so those are examples of the gram negative i hope we've made a good sense out of this thank you very much for sitting through this video kindly make sure to subscribe share like and comment the next concepts you would like to see on my channel. Bye-bye.